again you guys, it's Carly from The Poetry of Nice and today I'm going to answer some of your questions. So I've been having an amazing time recently uh, scrolling through all the comments that you guys have been leaving on the videos that I've been putting out. Um, I have loved hearing your tips and your tricks and things you've learned in your own process, your own journey as becoming resellers. Um, there's some people starting from the beginning, there's some people who've been doing it for way longer than I have and so we have a real good mesh of people learning from each other. So today I figured why not answer some of those questions in person. Um, I've picked five comments and I think I'm going to start doing this every week, like a Sunday comment roundup of the week. I'm going to pick five because that is a good amount time-wise for this video, but that by no means means that the other comments that I get aren't like worthy or whatever. That just means I'm randomly picking five and I'm going to make sure I try to do different people every single week um, so that everybody gets a chance hopefully to get those questions answered in more detail than it may be if I were just to type back. Having said that, I do try and reply to all of the comments personally, so if your comment is featured today, please don't think I won't be responding anyway, because I will be. I love to write back and I love to have a bit of back and forth with you guys. I'm having a great time getting to know you all. First things first, if you are new to this channel, this is a channel all about reselling online. I currently sell on eBay, Etsy and Poshmark, and I do so while being a stay-at-home parent. I do this because it allows me to contribute financially to my family, to pay off debt, take vacations, save money, all kinds of different things and also because I just really really like it. So you'll find here thrift hauls, you'll find sales videos so you can see how much things actually sell for online and you'll also find a bunch of like how to's and tutorials, a day in the life, all that kind of stuff about reselling. So if that sounds interesting I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button down below and come and hang out some more. So I'm going to be kind of like throwing the comment up on the screen and then I'll read it out as well and then I'll go ahead and answer it. Like I said I'll be doing five each time um, and I'm going to go ahead and read out the name, show the name, whatever of the person who left the comment because it's posted in a public forum anyway and I want to make sure those people know that I'm addressing their comment. You'll have to excuse me being rude. I'm on my phone <laughs> reading out the comments. Here we go. Super professional, I know. All right, so um, this is from Anjali. I really hope I'm not butchering your name. It's beautiful, by the way. Here is the comment and I'll throw it up as well so you can see her username there too. Um, it says, are you able to take offers from people on Etsy? I honestly wasn't even aware you could resell clothing there. I'm a reseller on Poshmark and Macari. And for shipping, do you have to figure that out yourself? Okay, awesome question and I get this all the time. So when it comes to Etsy, um, there is no sort of official route in terms of accepting offers from buyers. However, what I do and that they sort of suggest that you can do, and I know a lot of other resellers do as well, is in my like um, welcome slash about me segment on my shop page, and I'm going to go ahead and add an image as well. Ooh, somewhere over here so that you can see um, what it looks like for me. I make sure to include like a little blurb that says, hey, if you want to send me an offer on an item, please just send me a direct message and we can figure it out, basically. Um, that's the only way as far as I know that you can do that. There's no offer to likers, there's no um, best offer button. And I've had quite a few people over the few years that I've been selling on Etsy um, go ahead and send me offers this way. We've been able to just go back and forth through di direct message and figure it out between us on a price and a shipping cost that we both feel is suitable. So it's absolutely possible. And then as for shipping on Etsy, yes, it is calculated shipping essentially just like it is on eBay. Now you could do shipping profiles which give you gives you like a flat rate. So for instance, if you only sold vintage wrapping paper, then that was super appropriate for you to make a shipping profile that is maybe, I don't know, $2.50 and you know that that's gonna cover the majority of the cost no, no matter where it goes in the country. And then that's just your flat, uh, flat rate and you go ahead and keep that shipping profile for the item. You can do several shipping profiles, a lot actually, and you can name them all. So if you did wrapping paper and pencils, you could do different ones for each item and just sort of um, appropriately place it within the listing when you were doing the shipping portion. Um, but other than that, no, it's calculated. So for someone like me who sells vintage items, whether it be clothing or shoes, um, or I know other hard goods on Etsy, I always tell people my biggest advice is make sure that your weight is correct. 
Etsy I do most of my international orders through Etsy and when it comes to like shipping from the United States to somewhere like Germany or Finland or any of those kind of places ounces matter <laughs> I've learned this the hard way so many times I can't tell you so I do have like a postal scale like a digital scale and I just make sure that every single item that I list on Etsy I have weighed it beforehand I actually keep a little sort of handwritten if you will um uh, shipping weight profile thing oh gosh give me words um where it's basically all of the different forms of packaging like through the usps or um through like a poly mailer or whatever like that not that poly mailer really needs it but all the different box sizes essentially whether it be shoe box a large box a medium box a um mug size a game board box five hours later whatever they are i have taken them um, I and i didn't put them up i just laid them flat on the postal scale this was years ago now and i weighed them some way four ounces some way eight ounces and I keep that in my little pull-out drawer um, at my desk and when I list on Etsy I weigh my item and then I pull it out pull out my drawer and I look and I say okay it's a pair of shoes they're going to be going in a shoe box shoe box weighs six ounces so add six ounces on maybe add one or two ounces for comfort because of packing materials and things like that and then that is the weight that I use for my Etsy items so I really hope that that helps answer your question it's a little bit more complicated especially if you've been doing something like Poshmark where it's about as simple as it can be um, it, it's, it's a little bit harder work but as long as you weigh correctly it's really nothing to worry about okay so comment number two comes from fuse products um how do you come up with your shipping charges on ebay okay so i just kind of rambled a whole bunch about etsy it's pretty much the same thing and um, when it comes to ebay i do calculated shipping i actually don't offer free shipping at the moment at all if i did i would probably do this a little bit differently but as it stands i do calculated shipping um and i pretty much always just put on like if I can get it as first class because it's a pound or less I'll list it as first class and actually at the moment I'm not offering priority mail as an option which as I say that that's not good I really need to give my buyers the option when something's under a pound and my advice to others would be to do the same to either purchase it with first class shipping or for an upgrade that's already there in the profile that they can select without having to send me a message or whatever and um, have a priority mail so like a faster paced mail delivery um for just like a little upcharge or whatever so I really need to go ahead and add those in I make a mental note of doing that um other than that, it's just weigh the item, calculated shipping, and do it that way. I hope that helps. All right, comment number three is from Autumn. Uh, when do you take photos and source? I have one toddler and it feels impossible for me to get anything done. Oh, sister. <laughs> Yes, uh, he doesn't play quietly for long or always wants me to play along with him. I'm so envious, um, I want to learn from your ways. God bless you. Um, I have another one on the way. First of all, congratulations. Help, I feel you. Um, okay, so it's really just whenever I can. Um, my biggest advice in terms of this is to do everything in bulk and if possible with the help of your spouse my husband is amazing he is a huge factor in making sure that i can get certain things done to apply them to my growth whether it be filming youtube videos in bulk um or um photographing in bulk listing in bulk actually not really listing i do that on my own time or sourcing um so for me personally i do all my sourcing on a saturday morning sometimes that means i go on my own and my husband stays home and hangs with the kids um and sometimes that means that they all come along with me in the minivan and that's also fun sometimes until you know the patience wears out but the main thing is that I do it all together um I sometimes will hit a thrift store I used to do it when the kids were in play school more they're out at the moment they'll be going back soon oh. um, but I used to do I used to do it occasionally like a thrift store here and there but really uh, I just do it all on a Saturday morning because mostly I'm doing the church rummage sales and I'm doing the yard sales and that kind of thing so that's when all of the action tends to be happening on the weekend um in terms of taking photographs sometimes Sometimes I will I take my photos in the garage first of all so sometimes I'll just leave the door open to the garage the dudes will be either watching a movie or you know coloring or whatever it is that they're doing and I can see them and talk to them we have a very nice cozy house so we are not apart in any <laughs> in any way 
ever. <laughs> um, and, some, and so they'll kind of like wander in and out and they'll talk to me and they'll, you know, help me and all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, um, I will do that, like a great big stack of clothing and then I will bring it into my living room. Um, my process, my ideal process usually is then I take those clothes and I'll sit in front of the TV in the evening and I will measure each item and write down like its name, its size and any flaws that it has. And then I will bag it up put my inventory number there in my big old like notebook with the measurements and stuff and then I will go ahead and store it away get it out of my living room but at the moment I am falling behind on that truth be told and it's just sitting in a laundry basket beside my desk in the living room yes clothing is everywhere when you're a reseller um so um, that's pretty much it. It's about taking snippets of time and honestly the hardest thing that I found at the moment about being a work at home parent um, doing this is that I cannot stick to a schedule. Not really. Um, because you think you're going to go ahead and take photographs and then someone's sick or someone just really needs extra attention. Someone needs a, in fact, every, I was going to say someone needs a snack but everybody needs a snack all the time. <laughs> um, and it just, it just doesn't work that way. So I'm trying to chill out about that, but I'm a very goals oriented person. I like to stick to my checklist and I like to get everything done. And in fact, I like to get extra done. And so if you're like me, Autumn, I, I feel you. And all I can say is just hang in there. Um, it's, it's gonna have to be when you can, what you can, and just give yourself grace outside of that. But I have no doubt that you are doing awesome and good luck with baby number two, you go. Okay, comment number four. This is from Deborah Shirley. Um, great video. Thanks. Uh, it's also worth noting that when you share versus others sharing and how that is reflected on Poshmark. You share, the item goes to the top of brand listings. Others share, it's just shared to their followers. Both good, but, you're, but you sharing is most helpful when people are shopping via searching brands, descriptions, etc. So I included this, there's not a question, so I'm not gonna like try and ramble on about it, only because I didn't know that. So thank you for sharing. And um, I actually had one other person as well point that out. So to you as well, thank you very much. Um, this was a great Poshmark tip. I actually didn't realize that there was a difference in how it came up in people's news feeds or how current the item would seem in terms of like search and description. So it sounds like uh, making sure that you are sharing your own closet is a priority over sharing for other people, which kind of makes sense. And I kind of touched on that in the video anyway. You sort of need to make sure you're taking care of your own um, inventory and business before you're reaching out to others. But I think that's such a great point that she made. Um, and I feel like I really learned something from that comment. Also, several other people left comments too on that video saying that a great time to share your items is during a posh party, even if the item doesn't fit within a posh party because the traffic on the site is higher, which when I think about it, absolutely, that makes total sense, but I didn't include that in my video. So once again, guys, thank you so much for throwing that kind of information down in the comments. We're all learning stuff and I think it's awesome. So thank you. <laughs> okay, so the last comment I'm going to share with you today, comment number five, is from Kayla and it says, have you ever had a package? that you sold get lost in the mail. I'm in Georgia and I just sold something to a girl in Florida. When I checked the tracking number, it said the package is in New York. What happens if she doesn't receive the package? So this was actually in relation to the Poshmark video. So I'm going to answer it as though it's to do with Poshmark, um, although it's somewhat similar when it comes to eBay. So the whole point of having tracking is that you can track where the package is going and if it makes it to its destination. If it shows up as delivered, even if the person reaches out to you and says that they didn't get it, eBay and Poshmark and Etsy, in fact, are gonna go with the tracking and say, nope, sorry, it was delivered. The, the seller did their part that's that and sometimes they'll reimburse that other person um maybe privately but it's not really anything to do with you anymore as the seller you did good you sent the item out and it made it in terms of a package being lost this actually just happened to me on Poshmark um, and actually Poshmark didn't reach out to me about it um so I was scrolling through some of my sold items just kind of like taking it in you know checking making sure everything looked exactly how it should be and I noticed that one from back on like Christmas Eve said that it was still out like out for delivery or whatever it says or shipped it says shipped and I thought nope it definitely should have made it there by then so I went ahead and looked up the tracking and stuff and I realized that it had gone to the house apparently to the address and then it had been something had gone wrong essentially it had gone back to the post office 
and it was apparently sitting in the post office waiting for a collection that wasn't happening is what it said on the tracking um, I don't know what went on on the buyer's end so I'm definitely not speculating on that but the tracking basically said it hadn't made it there and it was just kind of in limbo um, so what I did is I sent an email out to Poshmark and I sort of preemptively I guess opened a case in that way or like at least reported the problem and let them know that this had happened no one is retrieving the package I haven't been paid funds haven't been released what do I do now and lo and behold the day later I got a message through and it said that the they had determined through the USPS tracking that the item had been lost in transit um, and so they had uh, reimbursed both myself like released my funds and reimbursed the buyer so that nobody lost out that is one of the things that I really like about Poshmark I find that they are so um, fair when it comes to this kind of thing and I also find that their processes are really easy in dealing with it so uh, my advice to you would be if it's been a while like if it's been a week or two and it's still showing that it's in a completely different end of the country than where it should be I would reach out to Poshmark and let them know because obviously you're not getting paid until it's made it there and I'm sure that they have some parameters within like time wise where they will go ahead and work with you in sorting out your reimbursement and things like that and the same for the buyer as well all right you guys thank Thank you so much for watching this video and um, thank you to everybody who's left a comment not just the people that I read out today but everybody else I read every single one of them and I do my best to respond to all of them as well um, and it's just been really fun learning from you guys tips tricks insights and also just getting to know you all as well so thank you all right you guys I'll see you in the next video bye all right it takes a while to get warmed up <laughs>